in this video we are going to talk about problems which involve rate of change or the first derivative of the function if you are the owner of a business your ultimate goal is to make as much profit as possible now to make the profit what you have to do is to come up with a price of an object that you produce and setting that price if you set it too high then obviously there's going to be less demand to buy the object and that causes the profit to go down and if you set the price to be too low this causes when the large quantities of, of item are ordered it causes although the revenue to go up it may result in less profit so to find the balance between the cost and revenue and profit it's going to be a very delicate matter and what we are going to do in this section we are going to find how we can achieve that balance we are going to introduce a couple of uh, definitions here. The first one is called the price function or a demand function. The price, the price function is a function in terms of X where X is a set price and price function returns the number of units of product that we can sell at that price X. We also define a revenue function which returns the total revenue if X number of products is sold at that price which is easily is represented with Rx which is X the number sold times P of X which is the price at that number of items sold now obviously producing X number of items is going to have some cost associated with it which we define with the function C of X which is returns the total cost of producing X units of a product now the profit function obviously is the revenue minus the cost we know that the revenue revenue function as we defined previously is RX which is x times p of x minus c of x which is the cost of producing that x units the difference here we call it p of x which is the profit of producing x units of an item now we are going to define another set of definitions one is called the marginal cost function which is the first derivative of the cost function which we denote with c prime of x or dc over dx this represents the instantaneous rate of change of total cost with respect to the number of items produced the next definition we call marginal revenue function which is the first derivative of the revenue function Rx which we denote with R prime of X which is dr over dx again it's the instantaneous rate of change of total revenue with respect to the number of items sold and the last definition is the marginal profit function which is the derivative the first derivative of profit function p of x which is denoted by p prime of x or dp over dt x which represents again instantaneous rate of change of total profit with respect to the total number of items sold x then first question says a company sells 1500 movie dvds per month at ten dollars each so we know we sell 1500 DVDs at $10 each. Market research has shown that sales will decrease by 125, so minus 125, 
per month for each 25 cents increase in price. The first question says determine the demand or price function. We know that the price function in terms of n where n is the number of increases is going to be ten dollars plus point twenty five n. For instance if we increase the price once n is equal to one then the price is ten twenty five if two times is ten fifty and so forth. At the same time we know that the numbers number of DVDs that we sell, let's say X, is equal to 1500 minus 125 N, where N again is the number of times we increase the price by 25 cents. From this equation, we can evaluate N as, if I move this one to the left and this one to the right, I get 125 N is 1500 minus X. So n is 1500 minus x over 125, which I can put it back in this equation, and I can say p of x now, because n now is replaced by this value, is equal to 10 plus 0.25 times 1500 minus x over 125. If we simplify this one, we get 13 minus 0.002x. So this is our demand or price function in terms of x, the number of DVDs sold. The next question says determine the marginal revenue, meaning the first derivative of revenue when sales are 1000 DVDs per month. To do this one, we know that by definition revenue is x times px, the number of DVDs sold times the price of DVDs, which is going to be x times P of x we found previously is 13 minus 0.002x, which is 13x minus 0.002x squared. So r prime, which is dr over dx, is 13 minus 2 times 0.002 is 0.004x. Now r prime at 1000 x equal to 1000 is 13 minus 0 0.004 times 1000 which is going to give us 13 minus 4 which is nine dollars per DVD this means that when you sell 1000 DVD per month the revenue is nine dollars per DVD the next question part of the question says the cost of producing X DVDs is given by this function determine the marginal cost meaning the first derivative when the production is 1000 when X is 1000 so we say DC over DX which is equal to c prime of x of cx is going to be 2 times negative 0 0.004 which is negative 0 0.008x plus 9.2 now evaluating this one at 1000 is going to give us negative 0 0.008 times 1000 is negative 8 plus 9.2 which is 1.2 dollars per DVD this means that when the number of DVDs sold in a month in a thousand is a thousand the cost is a dollar and 20 cents per DVD The next question says determine the actual cost of producing the hundredth 
1001 DVD. What we have to do is to find the cost for 1000 DVD and 1001 DVD and the difference is that 1001 DVD. So the cost for 1000 DVD is using the previous uh, equation which is given is the same as negative 0 0.004 times 1000 squared plus 9.2 times 1000 plus 5000 which is going to be 10200 exactly for 1001 the cost is plus 9.2 times 1001 plus 5000 is going to be approximately 10 to 1.196 dollars the difference so 1001 minus 1000 is going to be 10 to 1.196 minus 10 200 which is 1.196 now if you look at this cost for the 1000 first DVD and the marginal cost the marginal cost if you remember was a dollar twenty and this guy if we really you know round it to two decimal we're gonna get one dollar twenty here too this tells us that when the number of items are when we are dealing with a large number of items here x is one th in the one thousands if you are dealing with a big number of items then the marginal cost and the cost to produce for the next item is going to be almost the same value The next part of the question says determine the profit and marginal profit from the monthly sales of 1000 DVDs. We know that the profit function is equal to revenue function minus cost function. From the previous problems we said that revenue function is x times price function with the small p remember this P and this P are different this one is the price function this one is the profit function minus C of X which is going to be X times 13 minus 0.002 X plus Remember, there is a negative here, so if we multiply negative by the cost function, we get 0 plus 0.0004x squared minus 9.2x minus 5,000. Now, if we replace x with 1,000, we get 1,000 times 13 minus 0 0.002 times 1,000 plus 0 0.004 times 1,000 squared minus 9.2 times 1,000 minus 5,000. If we evaluate this one, we get $800. This means that if we sell 1,000 DVD in a month, the profit is $800. Now to find the marginal profit, we have to find the derivative of this function. So we get P prime of X is, if we distribute this bracket first, we get 13x, the derivative of 13x is 13. The next one is negative 0.02x squared, so the derivative of it is going to be negative 2 times 0.002x plus 
0 0.004 times 2x minus 9.2 and nine minus five thousand derivative is zero. So p prime of one thousand is going to be thirteen minus two times zero point zero zero two times one thousand minus zero plus zero point zero zero four times two times one thousand minus nine point two. If we evaluate this one we get seven point eight dollars per DVD this means that the profit at after selling one thousand DVDs is going to be is going to increase by seven point eight dollars per DVD the next question says you have an ice cream shop which sells hundred fifty ice cream Per month at the price of forty dollars each. The customer survey indicates that for each one dollar decrease in price, sales will will increase by five cakes. Part A says determine a revenue function based on the number of price increases. So it's not based on the number of cakes sold, but price increases. Let's say n to be the number of price increases. increases by one dollar so this means if I increase the price n is five then it means we have increased the price five times so each cake is going to cost forty five dollars each uh, right now so the revenue is the number of cakes sold we know that regularly we sold hundred fifty for every time we increase the price by one dollar, we sell uh, five more cakes. So it's going to be 150 plus 5n times the price. Price is regularly 40, but if each time we decrease by one dollar and we do it n times, so it's going to be minus. 1n. 1 is $1. Now, the first one says determine the revenue function, so this is our revenue function. The next part of the question says determine the marginal revenue, meaning that the first derivative of the revenue function that we found in part A. The one that we found in, in part A is written here, so we say dr to dn, which is r prime of n, is derivative of the first bracket, which is 5 times 40 minus n, plus the first bracket times the derivative of the second bracket, which is negative 1. If we simplify this one, 5 times 40 is 200 minus 5n minus 150 multiply negative 1 by each item in the bracket minus 5n now minus 5n minus 5n is minus 10n and 200 minus 150 is plus 50 so our marginal revenue is minus 10n plus 50 the next part of the question says, when is this marginal revenue function equal to zero? We found that the marginal revenue r prime of n is negative 10n plus 50. If this one is zero, then if I move this one to the left, I get negative 10n is negative 50. So n is equal to 5. So the marginal revenue function is equal to zero when n is five, meaning we have decreased the price five times. What is the total revenue at this time? We know that from the previous question, Rn was 150 plus 5n times 40 minus n. So R of five is equal to 150 
plus 5 times 5, 40 minus 5. If, and if you evaluate this one, then we are going to get that this one is equal to $6,125. Now, how can the owners use this information is the following that when they decrease the price five times the revenue is maximum at 6125 if they increase another time let's say six times then r6 is 150 plus five times six 40 minus six this is going to simplify to 6120 and you can see that the revenue decreases Although the sales increases, the sales before was 150 plus 5 times 5, which is 175. Now the sale is 150 plus 5 times 6, which is 180. The sale increases, by, but the revenue is decreasing, as the number is shown here. The next question says the kinetic energy K when an object is moving is determined by the formula KV is equal to 0.5 mv squared where m is the mass of the object in kilogram and v is the velocity of the object in meters per second. Suppose a ball with a mass of 350 gram is thrown vertically upward with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. The velocity function is given by this formula. 40 minus 9.8 t, where t is time in seconds. We are supposed to express the kinetic energy of the ball as a function of time. We note that kinetic energy kV is 0 0.5 mv squared which is going to be equal to 0 0.5 times m mass of the object in kilogram 350 kilogram you divide it by a thousand we get 0 0.35 kilogram times v squared v is 40 minus 9.8 squared if we simplify this one we get 0.175 40 minus 9.8 squared 9.8 t squared the next part of the question says determine the rate of change of kinetic energy of the ball at t equal to 3 so I have to find the derivative of k with respect to time which is 0 0.175 times 2 subtract 1 from the exponent so it becomes 1 and then the derivative of the inside the bracket which is negative 9.8 now dk to dt when t is equal to 3 is 0.175 times 2 40 minus 9.8 times 3 times negative 9.8 if we evaluate this one, we get negative 36.35 kilogram square meter divided by square second. And you can see that because of negative, this means that the rate of change is negative and the kinetic energy is decreasing. In the next example, we have an electrical circuit, the resistance r in ohms is represented by the function r is equal to 150 over i where i is the current in amps we are supposed to find the rate of change of the resistance with respect to the current when the current is 10 amp so we know that r is 150 i exponent minus 1 so r prime is 150 times negative 1 times i exponent negative 2 now the rate of change of resistance dr over d i when i is equal to 10 amps 
is negative 150 times negative 1 times 10 exponent negative 2, which is going to be negative 1.5 ohm per amp. This means the rate of change of the resistance is decreasing and it's 1.5 amp, I mean O, when the current is 10 amp. The next definition is called the linear density, which, which is the mass of an object per unit length. The formula for linear density is given here, which is rho is equal to mass over length. Now, if your object is made up of the same material, then it is said to be homogeneous since the mass of any length of the object is going to be a constant because the object, as I said before, is made up of the same material, so it's homogene homogeneous. In reality, this assumption that the object is made up of the same material is not true. In this case, we are going to define a function f of x, which gives the mass in kilogram of the first x meters of the object. So, function f of x, in this case, if we give x, which is the number of meters of the object, is going to return the mass of that x meters of the object. In this case, we are going to define average linear density of the object when the length is between x1 and x2 to be given by f of x1 minus f of x2 over x1 minus x2. This is going to return the average density for a length of x1 minus x2 of the object, given that the object is not homogeneous. If we take the, the, the first derivative of f of x, which is f prime of x, this is going to be the linear density, which is the rate of change of the density at a particular length x of the material. In the next example, the mass in kilogram of the first x meters of a wire is represented by this function, where x represents the length of the wire. We are supposed to find the average linear density of part of the wire from x equal to 5 to x equal to 8 meters. So to find that one, we know that f of 5 is equal to square root of 3 times 5 plus 1, which is 15 plus 1, which is 16, which is 4. f of 8 is square root of 3 times 8 plus 1, which is square root of 25, which is 5. So the average linear density rho is going to be f of 8, which is 5, minus f of 5, which is 4, divided by 8 minus 5, which is 1 over 3. And this is going to be our average linear density in kilogram per meter. The next question says determine the linear density at x equal to 5 and at x equal to 8, compare the densities at the two points and what do these values confirm about the wire. f of x is square root of 3x plus 1 or 3x plus 1 exponent 1 over 2, so f prime of x is 1 over 2 times 3 because x derivative of 3x plus 1 is 3 times 3x plus 1 exponent min one minus 1 over 2. So f prime of 5 is 
3 over 2 square root of 3 times 5 is 15 plus 1 is 16 which is going to be 3 over square root of 16 is 4 so 3 over 8 kilogram per meter and f prime of 8 is going to be 3 over 2 square root of 25 which is going to be 3 over square root of 25 is 5 times 2 is 10 kilogram per meter now if we look and compare these two values you can see that 3 over 8 and 3 over 10 they are not the same so this means that this met, uh, object is not made up of the same material it is not homogeneous it's non-homogeneous.